Hello and welcome to Reef Girls Reef Wrap Up number 13. If you saw my last update, you'll know that the aquascape is in the tank. There's sand in here, water in here, and I'm just basically waiting until things look ready to send out ICP tests to compare to the water in the basement. The lights are on now, encouraging the growth of any diatoms and algae that might come along in this stage of the cycling process. Although I must say that the biological part of the cycling process, water quality wise, appears to be complete. There's zero ammonia and has been for quite some time, zero nitrite and nitrate of less than 20. So now it's a waiting game. This is a piece of two little fishies little feet straight out of the bag. I put it in here just to see how it would compare to the rest of the rocks that I've been curing in some cases for well over a year. I'll leave it here and then show it to you with every update. So we had a problem to solve. Those bulkheads with the white pipes coming out of them are the direct connections to the pumps. And this container has snails in it. It's possible I might be able to get them all out and move them upstairs to the tank, but what if I don't? What if I miss one? And it crawls into one of those pipes. That was a concern of ours for quite a while, and we considered putting a strainer on there. One of these guys right here. They look like they're pretty open and wouldn't really hold up water flow, but they do. And that's why we had to cut holes like this all along that back edge underneath to improve the water flow through them because they really are restrictive. So my husband came up with a brilliant idea when he was thinking about it. Why not use the pump fittings that are supplied to put on the outside of the pumps on the intake when they're underwater? And so that's what he did. He found a fitting that would thread directly into them. And each one of the intakes is now protected with what essentially would have protected the pump itself had we installed the pumps in water. I think it's brilliant. And now I don't need to worry anymore about snails blocking access for the water to the pumps. Awesome. We are starting to see diatoms on the sand. Definite brown there. And the rocks, definitely getting some diatoms. Let's check the ammonia badge. Make sure it's still at zero. Yeah, there we go. That's awesome. So I, I'm pretty sure it's cycled. And now we wait for the brown stuff to come and go. I've had this urchin for several months and it is a really hard worker. Every time I see the tank, it's somewhere different. And this time it was on the front glass, so I took the opportunity to watch him. Up close. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty gross and fascinating all at the same time. I think he's healthy, doing well. Sometimes he has pebbles on his back. Most of the time he doesn't. So. He must feel pretty safe in here. I have to say I thought diatoms would come along a lot more quickly than they are. They are gradually spreading across the front, down the side, but it's not happening as fast as I thought it would given the full intensity of the lighting for 12 hours a day. One place they are accelerated though is along the side of the tank that faces the window. I think I'm going to have to start closing the shutters during the day. The sunlight has a much greater impact than I expected, and I don't want it to look sort of out of balance with the rest of the tank to have it so much darker on this side. But I guess that's a good sign that things are developing and going in the right direction. Yep. This again, it's becoming a regular occurrence. I might have to take that Yuma right out of here and put it somewhere else because I don't want to move this guy too far over here because of the other targets. Mr. Aggressive, have to keep this in mind when I move it into the big tank. 
this is the frag tank and I gotta investigate this nitrite reading. I do have a nitrate test, so I'm gonna go do that because uh, that is not good. If that is 3.5, I gotta move everything out of there, especially the Royal Grandma group, maybe do a huge water change. Uh, I don't know, maybe add another media bag? This is not good. I had a high reading, so I checked it with a Salifert test and it turns out to barely register. Even looking through the side, you can barely see it. I ended up doing a 50% water change and I added another bag of media from the 150 gallon section of the sump. I'll test again in a week and hopefully it will be zero. Shh, here's a sneak peek of our ATO booster. We have to build this to supplement our current ATO because I'm not sure it's going to keep up when the display tank is online. There'll be a video about this. Doing a water change on the observation tank with the pump off, check out the plate coral. <laughs> Looks cool. Over the past several days, a haze has developed on the water in this tank, and I think it needs some help to clear it up. Normally, I'd use a green machine, but because of the Euro brace, I can't install it in here. So I went looking for options, and I found something that will work with the Fluval 406 canister filter that's essentially running this tank right now. I ordered this Fluval UVC inline UV clarifier from AquariumDirect.com. Here it is installed on a piece of wood that my husband clamped to the aquarium stand. The installation was really simple. They supply a short piece of hose that's connected to the output from the canister and that's run into the UV clarifier unit and then the output hose is fastened to the output of the clarifier unit and goes back into the tank. Really, really straightforward. It's plugged into the wall here behind the tank and it's supplied with this little unit that acts as a timer or you can run it for 24 hours. So I have it set to run 24 seven because I think that's what it's gonna take. Honestly, it's only a three watt bulb and there's 300 gallons in this tank where the unit itself is only rated for 100. I don't know whether this is gonna work and I guess I'll have to wait and see. I had foamy bubbles on top of this tank and it kind of concerned me because I have no skimmer on here. So I decided to hook up something that I used with a lot of success in my 29 gallon cube and that's the reef glass skimmer. And there it is, luckily, I was thinking ahead and I packed everything I needed all together in the same box. Instead of putting hoses one place and an air pump another place, yeah, so all I had to do was unpack it. So you can see the bubbles are kind of rising up. The idea is to get the air set using this valve right here so that the bubbles just kind of go up and down right underneath there. And then when it's gonna push some skimmate out, it comes out this hose. And this hose is connected to a really rusty mason jar. Yeah, I'm gonna have to replace that lid, but that's how it came out of the box. <laughs> and then that goes inside and the skimmate gets deposited in here. So it's run on an air pump. This blue line is the air hose and the air pump is right there. And hey, you want your whisper air pumps to actually be super, super quiet? Put them on a one and a quarter inch thick block of styrofoam. Yep, I cannot even hear it running. Have it plugged in right here, this light. And if I didn't look at the light, I wouldn't even know it was on. So you can see what the bubbles are doing there. And so I think this is set up just about perfectly. You want that bubble column to move up and down, just like it does in a regular skimmer that pushes the foam up into the neck and up over the edge of the cup. Because only bubbles should reach that stopper. You shouldn't have any liquid up there. That's the beauty of this thing. And looking at the skimmate cup, I've put it in this container just in case there's an overflow. So that way, if 
it goes nuts on me overnight. I've got quite a bit of capacity to handle a problem. Okay, 24 hours since we put the UV on and it's cleared up a bit, but it's not crystal clear. I would like it to be a lot clearer than this and I guess I'll just have to wait and see. Today is a momentous day. It's probably a week ahead of when I originally planned, but I gathered samples for the ICP tests, one from the sump in the basement and the other from this tank. I found myself looking in here today and thinking, I want to try a coral in here just to see how it does. So I knew it was time. Now we wait. This is the most diatoms I have seen in here since the sand went in. And there is a little bit of a film on the glass. Here we have the test rock. Nothing's happening, like nothing. Adding a bit of cleanup crew to the tank. And over here, I have three strawberry conks. That guy's out looking around. These two are kind of moving. Oh, that guy's out. Yep, they've all got their eyeballs out. I'm just swapping out water to acclimate them. And over here, okay, hands up. Anybody who's ever seen trochus snails this big, they're freaking huge. So I think they very well suit the scale of the tank. I can hardly wait to see these guys at work in the tank. And here are the strawberry conks. That's the biggest one. And there's this guy. And then this guy over here, yep, he's got his eyes out too. So, quite happy with those. I put them where there's some diatoms. Then over here, we have the ginormous trochus snails. Set this guy on the rock, and hopefully he's actually stuck there. And then these two, the one closest to the glass, has been stuck on the other one and it looks to me like he's finally moving off. Talk about camouflage. Check this out. There's the conch snail right there. Wow. That is pretty cool. And look at this nonsense. There's the top of the water. One giant trochus snail. Two giant trochus snails. And three giant trochus snails. Yeah. Now I can go to bed and not worry about these guys anymore because they're out moving around. Cool. I happened to notice that this looked really pretty one night. This is with no filter. It's the 150. Oh yeah. Time to clean the filter pads, I think. I noticed the water was really getting high and that's the indicator that they are clogged. So I'm gonna shut the skimmer off and take care of that. Oh yeah, it was time. <laughs> February 10th, this showed up just today. So we'll see where it is in the morning, whether it's still here or if it gets consumed by anything. I'm trying to figure out if that's a sponge or what the heck that is in that little hollow there. And because I have this guy right here, it'd be interesting to see whether this snail makes the trek across the open desert to handle the stuff on this rock. Um, and I also added this as an accent rock. It's really cool. I think it's a maze brain skeleton. And the backside of it 
is pretty detailed. I thought this might be where I might mount a coral of some type. I don't know. So overall, things are looking pretty good. Sorry for the reflection. I am getting green film on the rocks, which I don't think it's algae. I know there are very small spots of short tufted algae in a few places over here. For example, there's algae in there, pretty sure. And once I get my herbivore fish in here, I'll make short work of that. Frag tank skimmer update. Yep, that's the paper towel I had to use to clean the underside of the stopper and unplug it. Look at that, look how well it's working. We got skimmate down here. Not super dark yet. That takes some time to develop as it breaks in. It's been running for, I think, about five days now. Uh, I swapped out the lid for a brand new one. And I am super pleased with how this is going. You know, it may not be super high efficiency pump. I don't know how many hundred liters of air, blah, blah, blah. But for what it is on this frag tank, it is doing great. So we're gonna keep up with that. And you know, very little foam now. There's getting to be quite a lot. And now that I've got the phosphate under control and got the skimmer going, I'm heading in the right direction. I'll finish this video with footage of the angelfish zooming around the tank. This is a nightly occurrence and I can hardly wait to see them in the big tank, which is getting closer and closer. I'm resisting the urge to check the tracking on the ICP mail because I'm just going to have to wait for that. If you enjoyed the video, why not give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already because even though this whole new tank thing has been going on for over a year now, in a lot of ways it's just beginning and I'd love it if you could join me for the journey. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I really appreciate it. Stay safe, everybody.